I'm Samantha Weaver, and I'm a palmist, um, and I have been doing this for 68 years. You're reading the lines and the molds and the mounds that uh, appear in the hand. People are so surprised and so unbelieving of what is actually in their palm and what's available that you can see. You can see if your man's cheating on you. You can see if a baby's coming. You can see if... Okay, here's the reading mm -hmm. And your right hand. Okay. So... Um, you can see that you. this is your lifeline. Do you see how that is? When it's cut or broke like that, you have a higher chance of wanting to drink, wanting to um, get into drugs or do any kind of a thing like that. But it doesn't because you, have, you catch it. So here it's not split open, so you're not in that problem now. You're in a mild receive here, meaning you got probably 75% chance now of winning the lottery if you buy one wallet. But the darker, the deeper it gets, the more likely you are. My grandmother was known as the bog witch or the um, healer woman, conjure woman. And so I picked it up at a very early age and I was reading all my classmates by the time we moved here to Norfolk. My best friend had a birthday party and her mother wanted me to uh, read palms and she gave me $5 in 1958. And so that was my professional outcome because I got paid for it. It was a lot of money to me as a uh, seven-year-old child. I surely didn't realize it was illegal totally on the thing. It was a shock to me when I um, heard about that, and I'm glad that they voted that seven to one. I think that a, a lot of that was naval influence of us having a Navy base that's here, and um, they didn't want them to be going there and getting ripped off. I can remember downtown Norfolk in the um, late 50s, early 60s, and there was a lot of women down there that did a lot of things. And one of the things that they did, and the sailors were the ones that they're targeting back in, at that time, and they would charge an arm and a leg. I know that the ones that were reading downtown at that time were certainly not readers. <laughs> they were in another line of work. <laughs> But I'm glad I didn't know they were voting on it. I mean, I would have been sick to my stomach if I'd have known uh, they were going to bring this back up at this particular time. I look at it as a gift from God that maybe we can correct some of the way that people think and, and get a better reputation for people that are very uh, committed to this. This has been my lifelong thing, and it hurts my feelings when people um, put me in the, the category of fraud. Back in the early 50s, uh, some people that would be at the different churches would say, oh, don't go to a fortune teller. And I've been at parties, and people will um, talk despairingly about it. And I've had, you know, when I was in my dating years early on, I remember I would say to a guy, if they were very religious or something like that, they'd think, oh, you're a palm reader. Okay, and that was the end of that romance. But... When you hit nobody else, who are you going to go to? I think they come to, to psychics and people like myself that can offer them something out of the ordinary. It's sad to me that you have to come to a stranger and pay a stranger to listen to you, to hear, to tell you things that give you hope. That part of it is sad to me. But I think that that, just like there's doctors, just like there's psychiatrists, just like there's all sorts of people that treat different parts of us humans. I treat the soul.